Good afternoon, everyone. Benjamin Lindsay here, Managing Editor at Backstage. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. I will give everyone a few moments to, uh, to jump into the room here. Um, you're tuning in for the latest edition of Backstage Live. As you know by now, this is our ongoing on-camera interview series um, with pros detailing their own careers, detailing how they got their start, offering advice for how you can too. Uh, talking about their latest projects, really, really all the good stuff that you know and love backstage for. Speaking of knowing and loving, um, we are joined today by Machian Amick. Uh, you know her from her starring role on Riverdale, which is currently in production on its sixth season. Um, of course, she has 30 years in this business. Just to list some of the credits, Twin Peaks, American Horror Story, The Witches of East End, Gossip Girl, Damages, Californication, um, so much more. Um, plus, she's doing some really exciting things behind the camera of late, uh, directing some episodes of Riverdale, as well as her feature film directorial debut, Reminisce. Um, that stars Bruce Stern and Julia Ormond. She just wrapped last month on production for that before heading to Riverdale production in Vancouver later this week. So uh, really excited to speak with her. Machian, let me uh, see if you are in our room here. Hello. Hi there. My name's Ben. Uh, it's very nice to meet you. Good to meet you too. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. Um, so it's my understanding that it is just last month that you wrapped uh, your directorial film debut and now you're headed to Vancouver. So you've really had quite the summer. Um, <laughs> I know, it was what? insane. It was absolutely yeah. crazy. I actually finished season five of Riverdale at the end of May, went straight into pre-production on the film in June, we filmed it all of July. Mm -hmm. um, and actually our wrap date was like August 2nd. So I've had like a couple of weeks to breathe. Okay. But of course, <laughs> within a couple of weeks, I also decided to launch our Direct Impact Mental Health Foundation. Right, of course. You know, I, had a, I had a minute, right? <laughs> you weren't busy enough. You weren't Not busy enough, enough, so there you go. And then, and then I head back up for season six of Riverdale this week, so. Really, really exciting stuff. Um, what, what's it been, I know Riverdale season five uh, has been in production, um, obviously wrapped, but uh, what, what's it been like just to be back at work? I know that everyone has kind of paused for a bit, but you're, you're busy yeah. back to back now. Yeah, we took, we took some time off. We, what did we do? Oh, so I was actually editing an episode that I directed mm -hmm. in LA. I had flown down to LA to do the edit. And, you know, we, we knew COVID was definitely a threat. Like people were being careful about how they flew, wearing masks, but nothing really had happened quite yet. Mm -hmm. And so I was down in LA editing and I was meant to go back up and finish. We had three episodes still to finish. And we were in the editing room and they're like production shut down, like everybody shutting everything down. Um, and we're like, okay. And so we edited a little bit more and then actually my edit was shut down. We had a couple of two more days to edit. We had to go home. Everybody had to take equipment home and finish the edit. Like, you know, uh, over you know just watching like t it was it was not great it was the technology was not set up quite yet right <laughs> but we did it we accomplished it and then uh we ended up thankfully getting back into production a little bit later than what we had planned but we came back finished those few episodes and then film season five the challenging thing was we were stuck in up in canada because of their quarantine rules right you had to quarantine for 14 days so Normally, if we had some time off, maybe we could fly back and see family or, you know, do another project or something. But we were stuck up there, but super thankful for work. So many people were out of work. Um, and so we just took things slow. We did less episodes last season. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We still have a few to air. Um, actually, my the episode, another direct uh, episode yeah. I directed will be September 1st. September Very 1st, right. Exciting. Um, yeah, and so now we get to go back. I'm hoping things will be a little more back to normal, but you know, mm -hmm. we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. So, so this really is your first time kind of relaxed at home in a while. It sounds like between being stuck like, in Canada and doing the film, and but it was like like a forced relax. Like I yeah. literally last week on the couch from from finishing directing, I just was like a forced 
horizontal on the couch, could not move. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I still like, if you look at me, I'm still exhausted and tired, but. Um, but you yeah. look great. <laughs> Everyone needs that sometimes though. Thank you. Um, before we get to talking about uh, this, this super exciting stuff that you're doing as a director, um, Riverdale obviously is wrapping up its fifth season. You're going into production on season six. Um, you're no stranger to the small screen, but this really is kind of a unique opportunity to live with the character for so many years. So what's been the most rewarding part for you just to kind of be able to play this role for, for a few years now? Well, it, and by the way, I mean, this is like, this is something that people, if, if anybody wants to get into film or, or television, television in particular, to be on a show that goes five, six seasons that we're mm -hmm. doing is so rare. It's lightning in a bottle. And so I feel very, very fortunate. I mean, I've been on shows that were hits before, Twin Peaks, mm -hmm. ER, Damages, you know, like I've been on those shows, but they, they, they don't, to be a series regular on a show that goes that long is very, very rare. And, and I'm very grateful for it. And it is very fun. Like, it's great to be able to stay with the character and and I'm always like excited to go into the next season because I don't know what Roberto has planned for Alice right. Cooper. Like, <laughs> some, you know, some new roller coaster that she's going to be on. And we have so much, Roberto and I have so much fun collaborating on Alice. And, you know, he really like takes thoughts, ideas, notes, you know, very seriously and mm -hmm. together even into the fabric of his overall story. And it's been a really great collaborative experience. And the, the biggest gem out of this whole thing is how much I love Lily Reinhardt and how much of a friend and a little soulmate that I have in her. Mm -hmm. We check in on each other, our mental health, we have each other's back and um, I could not have done this experience and enjoyed it the way I have and survived the way I have without her. Man, lo love hearing all that. And I'm sure that your collaboration with Roberto and kind of getting a taste behind the scenes, um, how's your years in front of the camera rather kind of enhance your understanding of your approach to this material behind the camera. Um, you, you've yeah. been, you've been a part of, part of Riverdale. Do you have a shorthand with kind of your co-stars that once you're behind the camera, it kind of comes easily? I think it does just because I've been in, I've been there with them through the journey. I've been in the trenches with them. Um, so I think that there's a bit of like trust that they have in me. Because a lot of times we have directors that come on, they you know they come and go. Some directors return and they come become a part of the family. Mm -hmm. But some directors kind of just fly into the episode and leave. And a lot of times it's hard to connect or even trust. Like, do you really understand the story and you know that trust that you need with your director? And mm -hmm. we have a shorthand in that because we've been through it with each other from day sure. one. So, and then also I can kind of push them a bit. I know them, I know what they've played. Uh, I know how they've, the take they've they've had on the character. And so sometimes I just wanna try to push them to, to do something a little more uncomfortable and outside the box and and spread the wings of the character as much as possible. And, you know, and once we get a really great take and what we all, you know, love and enjoy, now I say, all right, you have it. Now it's mm -hmm. time to play. Now go do something totally different, you know, like, let's see how far we can push the experience. So it's, yeah, been, yeah. it's been really fun. And I'm sure that's what you love hearing as an actor too. So, so you, you know, <laughs> you know the way that you like to be directed. So you're kind of bringing that to the table naturally. Yeah. Um, how is it that this opportunity first came about? Were you actively kind of advocating for yourself to, yeah, with Roberto, I, I want to direct and see, yeah, see where sure. it ended? Yeah. yeah, for sure. I, I had um, already started directing. I'd been doing music videos, uh, short films, a documentary. So I was, and I was actually writing, developing a show on my own and stuff. And so I had already kind of started the journey of going behind the camera. But I, and I didn't want to ask right away, not like in season one or, you know, even season two, but I started saying in season, I, I really want to direct. Like, mm -hmm. no, no, but seriously, like, I really want to direct. Yeah. No, but really, <laughs> right. I really want to direct. Plant the seed, um, yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's, it, what the nice thing is, is that you, you have to prove that you've gone through it, like, in order to even, you know, get into um, a director's workshop through, like, the DGA or if Warner Brothers has a great directing um uh, I guess you'd call it workshop, but you, you know, you already have to have had a body of work. Mm -hmm. You have to have some laurels. 
Um, and so it just kind of weeds out people that are very serious about wanting to be a filmmaker and not just anybody and everybody like, oh, hey, I want to direct this episode. Right. <laughs> um, but I had kind of done all that, done my work and, and kind of proved that I was willing to put in the hard work in order to kind of deserve the inv invitation. And they've been great and supportive and they are really focused on Berlanti Productions, Warner Brothers, CW are so focused on getting um, diversity behind the camera and in mm -hmm. the storytelling and in the, the filmmakers. And so it created a great opportunity for me to have the, the, um, the experience and, yeah. and the support, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's so important. Um, well, well, my next question was just the general advice that you would give an actor who wants to step behind the camera. But it sounds like uh, you, you kind of touched on it just in terms of getting getting your boots on the ground, getting the training, making sure that you're putting in the work and not like you, yeah. you're, you're advocating for yourself and asking for it. But you also know what you have to prove about. yourself, you know, yeah, you have to yeah. prove yourself like you because you know, I mean, hey, there's a lot of us actors, we mm -hmm. all have opinions, but who's willing to really put in the hard work and the long hours and honor what, what the, the showrunner wants in the show, you know? And um, so anybody who wants to step behind the camera, first of all, just start doing it. It doesn't mm -hmm. like right now, the, the, the great thing about this like generation in this age, you can go out and shoot a really great film on an iPhone. Mm -hmm. like, one of the, like, I had already shot a couple of music videos on, like, you know, a major, like, red camera, and it was beautiful with lighting and a proper uh, director of photography. But when I heard about the movie Tangerine that was mm -hmm. shot on iPhone, I looked into, like, wait a minute, how did they do that? And how did they make it look that way? So they went, there's an anamorphic lens that you can put on your iPhone. You know, it's not that expensive. You mm -hmm. get a little gimbal. You know, so you've got beautiful, smooth movements. You you get your your technology and your apps in place, and you can shoot something. So don't be afraid. Get out there, tell your story, do it authentically, and you will find your way. You'll find your momentum. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and in terms of that, uh, t talk to us a bit about Reminisce. Is, is this kind of a, a long, gestating dream to do a feature film and oh, uh, sure. to get behind the camera for that. So, so what was your yes. experience like with that? And what made you want to jump on to tell this story? Um, well, I actually had collaborated. So the um, writer, producer and star of the film, I had actually brought on to a project that I had done earlier. And it was a, it was a documentary based on mental health conversations. And so we kind of like were very similar spirits in wanting to change the narrative around mental illness. And mm -hmm. so uh, the story that she wrote is based on a young woman in her 20s, and she's dealing with past trauma, childhood trauma. And from that, there's a diagnosis that's that's coming into play. And she's it's we get to experience with her coming to this diagnosis and what it means. And then what does that mean for all of the characters that surround her? And so um, it was important for us to tell a story that depicts mental illness differently, more accurately, and really honors just the journey of um, mental illness in, in, in films. Because mm -hmm. what angers me now that it's a part of our personal life is when like, you know, there's some villainous character. And so it's just so easy for them to say, oh, well, they have a mental illness, right? Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. they're schizophrenic or they're, you know, like whatever. It's like, it's just so um, irresponsible to mm -hmm. do that. And so we wanted to tell it just a real true story about the good and the bad and the beautiful and um, showing all of it and how you move forward and live with a diagnosis. So it was, a, it was very personal to me to be mm -hmm. a part of the movie. Um, I mean, of course, just doing a feature film is great and cool. And we got Bruce Stern and Julia Ormond and you know, we have these amazing legends in the film, but it, it meant a lot. And everyone that came on board, it was a little independent film. We shot it in mm -hmm. 60 days. I mean, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's, it's going to look amazing on the big mm -hmm. screen. And we're going to hit all the festivals and win all the awards. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> but I mean, you know, like people who came on, came on for a bigger meaning, like a bigger reason. Like mm -hmm. it meant something to everyone that came aboard, so. I'm really proud of being a part of it. And where the editor is doing her cut now, 
and then I'll get into editing. So I'll basically be up in Canada filming Riverdale and juggling editing, um, you know, from from far away with wonderful technology. <laughs> Very exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. Well, um, aside from Eminence and aside from Riverdale, um, just, just to leave us with some, some words of wisdom, uh, again, backstage as audiences, the working actors, the working creators of the world, you've been at this for 30 some odd years, really incredible performances along the way. Um, what's one piece of advice that you would give your younger self when you were first moving to Los Angeles and hitting the audition room and before you got a break like Twin Peaks, how, how did you kind of navigate that? And uh, what, what, would you, what would you offer to our audience out there today? Um, I would say, look, you gotta be in it for the long haul. Yes, okay, there are some stories out there, I guess, that people get discovered in a diner overnight. I, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if that's ever really happened, to be honest, because it just takes a lot of, a lot of hard work. Keep putting yourself out there. Don't get distort, discouraged. This is an industry that has, in fact, David Lynch told me this is one of, you know, David Lynch that did Twin Peaks, one of the first things I did in my career. And he said, you have to understand as an actor, you, you will not get the job 99.9% .9 of the time. Mm -hmm. And you can't get to, you have to be, I just sort of like always kind of attribute it to, I'm on the bow of a ship, ship that's out in the deep ocean and we're hitting the waves and we're in the storm, you know, and everybody's mm -hmm. <laughs> the bow. It kind of is like whoever got to hang on to that, that railing and that bow long enough Mm -hmm. we'll end up having a career in the industry. <laughs> like, it yeah. like that. It like <laughs> I like that image. Yeah. And just yeah. ripping off and like, you know. So, you know, if you love it, stick with it. But I also will say, I, I ended up getting Twin Peaks and I ended up having a hit show pretty quickly in my career. And that is light, lightning in a bottle. That doesn't mm -hmm. happen. So you got to figure out how to fend for yourself find that that day job you got to find the way to pay those bills that still allows you to to pursue your craft but you have to be able to take care of yourself so that you can be in it for the long run because it is going to take a while mm -hmm. and keep studying and keep trying and keep putting yourself out there um you know you will you will get the successes along the way just don't get discouraged if it isn't this quote unquote overnight discovery. Right, right. There, there is no such thing. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, I, the ones that were discovered overnight had been working at it for, you know, years and then absolutely. all of a sudden got their break, right? It's, so, it's only overnight to the audience, but the, for the person who's experiencing it, it's been years in the making. For exactly, sure. exactly. Um, well, it's been so great just to get to know you a little bit. Thank you for sharing uh, with us about your experience on Riverdale, Reminisce, and uh, just sharing your advice after years in the industry. Absolutely. This has been great. And since I'm on here, I, I want to yeah. invite everybody to go over to, so I've uh, founded a, a mental health foundation that's direct impact to help uh, those in need that can't otherwise get treatment or find sources and support. Mm. And today is our official website launch day. We've awesome. are, we already have our social media, so go over to at Don't Mind Me, but you can check out our website at don'tmindme.org. So. All right, we'll be we'll be sure to tag at Don't Mind Me in uh, in our write up of this as Thank well. Thank you, I um, appreciate it. Yeah, of course, of course. Congrats on the launch. That's huge. Thanks. Yeah, staying busy for sure. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we'll be in touch, and uh, thanks again. Stay well. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.